اللهم انا نحمدك ونستعينك ونستهديك ونستلهمك الهدى والتقى والعفاف والغنى ونشهد ان لا اله الا انت الواحد الاحد والفرد الصمد الذي لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا احد ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان سيدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله وخاتم انبيائه وخيره خلقه وحبيبه اللهم صل وسلم عليه اللهم صل عليه صلاه دائمه الى يوم الدين وصل على اله وصحابته ومن والاهم واهتدى بهديهم واستنى بسنتهم ودعا بدعوتهم الى يوم الدين اللهم اجعلنا منهم اما بعد عباد الله اوصيكم ونفسي اولا بتقوى الله اتقوا الله سبحانه وتعالى فانه سبحانه وتعالى يقول في كتابه المجيد واتقوا يا اولي الالباب لعلكم تفلحون brothers and sisters before i begin i praise almighty allah the creator sustainer and cherisher of the worlds i praise him i turn to him in refuge and protection i turn to him beseeching his mercy and forgiveness on behalf of myself and everyone gathered here may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala receive us all in his mercy may allah forgive us our many failings weaknesses trespasses and may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us our sins outward and inward major and minor secret and public Let's turn to the Lord of the worlds seeking his mercy and forgiveness inna rahmatullahi qaribun min al-muhsinin verily the mercy of Allah are always closer to those who seek excellence in their faith and practice and behavior I bear witness there is no god but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who controls all things in this universe he exalts some and lowers others he is the one who has absolute sovereignty and control and dominion over his creation so the history testifies to this rise and fall of nations rise and fall of leaders and kings so in this context this milieu that you and i are living and breathing there is so much in the news much of it is concerning me and you it should grieve the believer it should give everyone who has conscience but allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has honored me and you with a message of hope with a message of mercy and healing with a message that is intended to empower us to take us out of the abysmal pit of darkness and backwardness this message when it is internalized when it is acted upon is going to empower us and lead us to ways of liberation and freedom and dignity you know people everywhere in canada in usa and uk and all over europe and asia are analyzing the elections the aftermath the slogans that were raised this particular individual who is elected to the most powerful position in the world power he can destroy not only america but the world but he has the cho- he has a choice to change his course repent and turn to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala turn to god almighty 
which we Muslim believe, Christians believe, Jews believe, and every religious people on the face of the earth, they recognize that there is one God who is the controller, he is the master, he is the lord of the universe, and he can raise people up, he can bring them down. And there is a law, divine law. The Hindus call it Dharma. We call it Sharia. And of course, there is the law of Moses. There is the way of Jesus. Scriptures, one after the other, tell us that we reap what we sow. We reap what we planned. So for Muslims today, what we read in the news, what we hear, what we experience on a daily basis, those who lack real faith, it can impact them negatively. It can lead us to despair. It's all doom and gloom. Is it all doom and gloom? That is not the vocabulary of Islam. Despair is not in the vocabulary of Islam. Innahu la yayasu min rawillah illa al-qawmul kafirun. Only those who disbelieve in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who do not, do not recognize God, the sovereign Lord and master of the universe, and how he acts in history, his power, only those who deny the sovereignty of God can despair of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So despair is not what Islam wants me and you to cherish, to, to, to have. Islam want, wants to empower us. So my topic today is how we seek to empower ourselves by using the spiritual resources of the book, the final message, the Holy Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has narrated the stories of his prophets and one of the phrases that repeatedly mentioned there is nothing for entertainment, it is not for entertainment intellectual or spiritual, it is practical wisdom for me and you to follow. Whether it is the story of Nuh salam, whether it is the story of Hud salam, whether it is the story of Musa salam, whether it is the story of Jesus, peace be upon him, whether it is the story of Muhammad, peace be upon him, in face of trials, in face of tri tribulations, we are reminded to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just an example, the allied forces of Arabia, the mushrikeen who fought Rasulullah relentlessly for many years, and they tried every means Within their disposal, they exerted themselves, they mobilized all of Arabia to destroy the nascent community, the very tiny community in Medina. And they laid siege to Medina. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses this to empower the believers. الَّذِينَ قَالَ لَهُمُ النَّاسُ إِنَّ النَّاسَ قَدْ جَمَعُوا Those who were, people told them the enemies, the munafiqeen, they addressed the believers, إِنَّ النَّاسَ قَدْ جَمَعُوا لَكُمْ All people are gathered against you to destroy you. فَخْشَوْهُمْ So fear them. But instead of leading believers to despair. It only emboldened, empowered them, emboldened them. It empowered them. 
فَزَادَهُمْ إِيمَانًا وَقَالُوا حَسْبُنَ اللَّهِ It only enhanced, increased and strengthened their faith. وَقَالُوا حَسْبُنَ اللَّهِ They said, Allah is sufficient for us. وَعَلَى اللَّهِ فَتَوَكَّلُوا إِنْ كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ And upon Allah, you place all your trust if you are believers. But trusting in Allah is not a call to do nothing. This is not the way the Prophet changed the course of history. The Prophet وسلم, mobilized, exerted himself at most. He struggled hard. Even in the darkest moment, despair, doom and gloom experienced by everybody except the true believers. An example is Makkah. When his companions were persecuted, some of them lynched to death. And some of the believers came to Rasulullah Mata. <coughs> Until when we will experience all this, will continue like this. It's a very desperate situation. The Prophet's answer was, I shall continue to struggle until the law and order prevails in Arabia to such an extent that a young girl, young woman can travel all by herself from Hira to Haram without any fear of anyone assaulting her. And yet our believers, our muftis say, women always need an escort, a mahram. So the whole context of mahram is protection that a woman can travel freely without fear of molestation, fear of assault. So the Prophet said, I will pay, I will establish law and order in Arabia. So in the darkness, and that is why Maulana Rumi said, a believer is conditioned to see hope in ruin. When there is destruction, when there is negativity, when there is doom and gloom everywhere, a believer should see hope and light. But how do we do that? How do we reverse our condition? First of all, we cannot simply say, it's all the will of Allah. It is the will of Allah. قُلِ اللَّهُمَّ مَالِكَ الْمُلْكِ تُوتِ الْمُلْكَ مَنْ تَشَاءُ وَتَنْزِغُ الْمُلْكَ مَنْ تَشَاءُ وَتُعِزُّ مَنْ تَشَاءُ وَتُذِلُّ مَنْ يَشَاءُ مَنْ تَشَاءُ Oh Allah, say, اللَّهُمَّ مَالِكَ الْمُلْكِ Oh Allah, you are the sovereign Lord. Absolute control and dominion. Possession. Allah possesses the ultimate sovereignty and control. Total mulka man You give power to those who choose. And you take away power from those who choose. You will. What to man You exalt those who you will. You choose. What to dhillu man Bring down others. Biyadikal khair. All goodness is in your hands. And you have the power over all things. One of the greatest Muslims of this century, 20th century, we have a lot to learn from him. He is none other than Allama Muhammad Asad, rahmatullahi alayhi. He is described as Europe's gift to Islam. He came from a rabbinical family in Europe. By the way, his father and sister perished in the concentration camp. From a rabbinical background, he came to Jerusalem, he was exposed to the beauty of Islam. He interacted with Palestinians, good Muslims, simple Muslims, and he converted to Islam. At the very young age, he was in his 20s. He saw the beauty of Islam. And he lived it, he struggled for it, 
until he is dead and he died at the age of 91. I still remember the interview. The last interview he gave and the final words he spoke to Muslims about Muslims and Islam. Islam is unsurpassed in its beauty but Muslims don't deserve it. You see, this is the very, very critical analysis. He knows that Islam, nobody can improve it, nobody can make it better because it's already the most beautiful faith, most beautiful way of life, but we Muslims have abandoned it. We don't practice. We don't have the ethics of Islam. So the message of Muhammad has said, we need to receive very goodness. He was inspired by the life-giving message of the Holy Quran. The Quran has the power. He spent a major part of his life studying the power, the spiritual message of the Quran. And actually, I know even Murad Hoffman, one of the great philosophers, the ambassador of Germany to Morocco and Algeria embraced Islam by reading his, the work of Muhammad Asad. So my message today is Muslims need to engage in introspection. How did Rasulullah reverse the fortune? Turn the table again in his favor. When he stood up, the whole world was virtually against him to destroy him, to destroy his message. And those who had fought against him relentlessly for years, before he died, hundreds of them became the vanguard of Islam. After having fought the Prophet and his message for years, they embraced, they saw the beauty of this message. Through what? Because they so observed the performance, the behavior, the character of Rasulullah. The story of woman, young woman traveling all by herself from Hira to Haram. This was told second time by Rasulullah in Medina in the final year of his life to none other than Adi ibn Hatim who was a Christian king who fought against Rasulullah And finally, he observed that he came to Medina not to embrace Islam, but to negotiate with Rasulullah because he's still an enemy of Islam and the Prophet But he came to Medina to observe the character, the actions of the Prophet it's a very intelligent man. He said, this is one son, this is another, this is another, and that's it. He embraced Islam. I don't want to go and analyze the signs of prophethood, of divine authorship, of the authority of the Prophet's message. And then he, Prophet Wasallam, after he embraced Islam, Rasulullah Wasallam told him, some of the prophecy, three things that would happen. He will see if Allah gives him long life. And one of them was, Adi, if you live long, you are going to see the rule of law will prevail in Arabia. So much so that a young girl will travel from Hira to Haram with, without any escort. She would have no fear for anybody except maybe if she has sheep. She will have to be fear for the wolves praying over her sheep. You see, so the lesson for me and you is we need to engage in introspection. Muslims should reuse the resources. Our rich people are busy building mansions and wasting, squandering the resources that Allah has given them. This mal, as Sheikh Abdullah Hakim reminds us every khutbah, is a fitna. And it has become big fitna for Muslims. 
and mar is evil unless we use it message for our rulers king prime ministers rich man here in america i have been to some of these rich houses if only they spend a small percentage of these resources they squander to present the beautiful face of islam to be charitable to be compassionate to take care of the poor because rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam did that the believers wherever they went islam spread through the beautiful behavior it came to india where the people outside the caste system were given food on the food was thrown drink was thrown to them on the earth but they will give the dog food in in a container but not those human beings and of course islamic message of liberation came there and they saw the openness the beauty and this is exactly what attracted muhammad asad to islam the openness the brotherhood and he witnessed that how the black man in palestine was treated as a, a brother by a person who may be white and it is the first time he recognized that this is a religion that you can unite so message of Mus for muslims in america in canada is we need to go out you know the analysis everybody should read that globe and mail article today many people think that it's only the economically dispossessed economically affected people who voted actually most of the people majority of those who voted for trump were economically well placed but they were the people most segregated they didn't have the opportunity to interact with muslims or minorities they were living in their walled cities or walled settlements and they were victims of bigotry and ignorance and nas wa'ada ma jahilu people are enemies of what they don't know have we taken out this message of islam or are we going back to our cocoons more and more we practice navel gazing and don't go out and interact with our neighbors this is going to come here how many of you know your neighbor regardless of what religion islam teaches us good neighborliness so let us open our masajid let us open our islamic centers let us open our schools let us open our hearts to embrace the stranger this is the lesson of the story of prophet ibrahim alayhi salam when he was sitting waiting outside the tent of his house he saw three strangers going and ibrahim alayhi salam didn't know them he welcomed them home no fear he welcomed them home and treated them to a good feast and who were they they were angels they could not taste the the feast he prepared as soon as he came give them they entered home he gave them water they washed themselves and they were seated and ibrahim alayhi salam goes and slaughters a, a lamb a good lamb healthy one and provides a feast help yourself the lesson here is welcome the stranger to your home open open up let us not practice what some people teach in the name of jihad islam is ahibbal linnasi ma tuhibbu li nafsik takun musliman love for people all people in hajjatul wada he didn't say ahibbal lil muslimin he said ahibbal lil nas ma tuhibbu li nafsik wish for everyone what you love for yourself takun musliman you will be a believer and let everybody every human being feel safe in their positions in their blood in their honor from you takun mu'min and you will be a believer let us practice this message wa'alallahi fatawakkalu 
Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is told in Surah Sharh, Allah said to him, Allah, you know, lower that burden, took away that burden weighing heavily on your shoulders and gave you relief, gave you victory. You should recognize when you face hardship, in the ma'al usri yusra, verily with hardship comes ease. We are here to struggle, trials, we will face trials. Are we going to leave our religion? Are you going to change your name? If you are Muhammad, I got questions online. My name is Muhammad, I want to change it. I said, how dare you? Aren't you a believer? Who is the best man to walk on this earth? He is the Sayyidul Kawalain. He is the master. He is chosen one of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You cannot have a better name. My name is Ahmad and I am honored to carry the name of Rasulullah. It has helped me to correct myself, rethink some of my behavior and improve it because take pride that your name is Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So don't change your name, be bold. There is no place for cowardice, niggardliness. Allahumma inna na'udhu bika min al-ajzi wal kasal. One of the prayers of Rasulullah is, Ya Allah, I seek refuge in you from fading helplessness. Wala ta'ajiz. You are powerful. You have all the resources. Hasbi Allah. Hasbi Allah. Allah is sufficient for us. Hasbun Allah. This is in the morning prayers, affirmations. Hasbun Allah. Hasbun Allah. Hasbun Allah. Allah is sufficient for us. This was the empowering dua that, that the, our spiritual masters, Rasulullah taught, and after him, the spiritual masters taught us. So never be ashamed. Sisters, don't remove your modest attire. Having said that, niqab is not essential. If it was essential, Rasulullah would have said that. There is nothing in this religion that anybody can impose as a restriction if Allah and his messenger did not impose it. There is nothing obligatory unless Allah has made it obligatory. So there is no need for us or Muslim women to go around wearing niqab, reinforcing the negativity about Islam and Muslim women, brothers and sisters, I tell you, let us stick to the universal message of, the, of, of Islam. It's for all times and places, and surely when we stand with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and look up to the beautiful examples of Rasulullah, Inna Allah Jamilun Yuhibbul Jamal, Allah is beautiful and He loves beauty. But what is beauty? It's not just physical beauty, it's the beauty of character, it's the mercy, it is the generosity, it is self-sacrifice, it is caring for your neighbor. And Muslims did that, care for the poor. The money you waste in this big feast, and people post it on the Facebook, and who is going to see it? Some who may not even have one morsel of food, and they are seeing it and it's going to break their heart. Don't waste the resources. Use them, put them to the service of Islam, to the service of Allah, to promoting the beautiful message of Islam. Surely, you know, Trump will come back. Good news I, uh, I read before coming here is that Trump, who, who made a, a promise that the first thing he will do is to impose a complete ban on Muslims entering United States. He took this out from his website. So maybe Allah is working to change his heart. And surely let's wish him well. Let us pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help him to see the beauty of Islam. And Muslims are not the enemies of Canada or America or any country in the world. Muslims are part and parcel of this country. Their mission is to improve life, not only for the citizens, but also for all of the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
illa rahmatan lil alamin we have sandhi solely as a mercy for all of creation let us exemplify that let us show that through a performance and action aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum الحمد لله الذي هدانا الى دين الاسلام وما كنا لنهتدي لولا ان هدانا الله اشهد ان لا اله الا الله واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله ان الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا ايها الذين امنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم على عبدك ورسولك محمد كما صليت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد اي ريكوست एवरी वन ان شاء الله एवरी बिलीवर should be praying from his heart her heart for allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to turn towards us in mercy to inspire us to act on the beautiful message that he has given us through the quran and improve our performance our actions our beliefs and practices in accordance with the life giving message of the quran and the beautiful example of rasulullah the messenger of mercy Rasulullah is messenger of mercy so it's my duty to be an ambassador and a conduit of the divine mercy and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inspire us to pray to him to seek refuge in him to turn to him in repentance seeking repentance istaghfiru innahu kana ghafara consistency in istighfar will remove take us out of hardship into really bring relief and the assistance and mercy of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala let us also pray for everyone who is suffering in various forms of oppression persecution and these wars millions who are suffering let us pray for them that the lord of mercy turn to them in mercy may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring down relief may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them dignity and honor اللهم اعز الاسلام والمسلمين اللهم اعز الاسلام والمسلمين اللهم ارحم امه محمد اللهم ارحم امه محمد the umma of muhammad embraces all of humanity اللهم ارحم امه محمد اللهم فرج عن امه محمد ربنا لا تدع لنا ذنبا الا غفرته ولا هما الا فرجته ولا دينا الا قضيته ولا مريضا الا شفيته ولا ميتا الا رحمته ولا حاجه تنطلق الا قضيتها يا ارحم الراحمين مي الله سبحانه وتعالى سن داون هيلينج اند كيور ابون اول ذوس هو ار سيك اند سفرينج يا الله هاو ميرسي اون ذم يا الله هيل ذم اند كيور ذم اند جرانت ذم ا جود لايف جود لايف اف لايف از جود فور ذم اف لايف از نوت جود فور ذم تيك ذير سولز وذ ميرسي اند فورغيف ذم اند ادميت ذم ان تو ذا جنه الفردوس اند ليت اس اولسو براي فور ذوس هو باس اواي اللهم اغفر لهم وارحمهم اللهم اغفر لهم وارحمهم اللهم اغفر لهم وارحمهم اقم الصلاه